Welcome to the second instalment of Is It Time to Start Giving a Shit, part two on air pollution, where I'm going to be arming you with all of the recent stats, historical facts, and the latest scientific evidence with references and sources that you can check, and absolutely none of my own personal opinion. I'm looking into what's being done, what can be done, and going over some of the surprising and decidedly uncomfortable discoveries I've made whilst researching this subject for you. The first one being that pollution levels are actually up to two and a half times higher inside cars, taxis and buses due to the concentrating effect of confined spaces and also because the air intakes on these vehicles are so close to exhaust level where pollution levels are the highest. So you can't even hide from air pollution in your own car which is most inconvenient for all of us. But what's being done and what can be done to tackle this issue? Well, 2008 saw the introduction of London's low emission zone that's had no impact according to a study carried out by King's College London's air pollution experts. London breached its own legal limit on air pollution for the whole of 2016 in less than eight days. And the former mayor Boris Johnson responded to the scientific evidence that Oxford Street has the highest levels of nitrogen dioxide recorded on any street in any city on the planet in denial by saying that it was, and I quote, bollocks. The new mayor Sadiq Khan has promised to expand the ultra low emission zone, although it operates on the same flawed principle that the now proven to be an effective low emission zone operates by just charging road users rather than penalizing the car manufacturing and fossil fuel industries responsible for the continued supply of high polluting vehicles and fuels. Instead, it would appear that these industries are receiving economic support. A recent report from the Overseas Development Institute singles out the UK as the only one G7 nation that is ramping up support for the fossil fuel industry as it simultaneously cuts support for renewables and the clean energy sector. Now, according to the report, production subsidies of 5.9 billion pounds have already benefited fossil fuel companies operating in the UK, while 3.7 billion pounds is used to subsidize oil production overseas in places like Russia, Saudi Arabia and China. Now the head of the International Energy Agency, Dr. Fatih Birol, said last year, fossil fuel subsidies are public enemy number one for the growth of the clean energy sector. But that same year, George Osborne announced new tax breaks for North Sea oil production that would cost the UK taxpayer around 1.7 billion pounds by 2020, according to the government's own figures. BP's profits came in at a whopping $5.9 billion that year, and the UK car industry announced a record 69.5 billion pound turnover as the sector accelerated to an historic high, although clean electric cars made up only around 1% of sales. Now, despite all of these generous handouts to the oil industry, bumper profits in the car manufacturing sector and a startling report by the Royal College of Physicians putting the UK health cost of air pollution at more than £20 billion per year, which is around 16% of the total annual NHS budget. The Environment Secretary was recently quoted as saying EU air pollution goals would be too costly. The UK government's current action plan on air pollution will not achieve EU compliance in London until 2025 and even longer in other areas of the UK. Client Earth, Europe's leading environmental law charity, have been engaged in a six-year legal battle with the UK government for catastrophic failures on air pollution levels, so donations to them can actually help influence government policy. Greenpeace run an ongoing awareness campaign with the aim of more people supporting and joining the fight for change, and Friends of the Earth have launched an online petition calling for an end to toxic air. The King's College London Air website gives the latest air pollution monitoring data and forecasts, and the non-profit organisation Clean Air London, who also rely on donations, has an excellent 10-step action plan that includes how individuals can lobby the government, write to the Prime Minister and make as much political noise as possible. There is now a personal pollution app and sensor called Clean Space for the Tech Geeks. Check howpollutedismyschoolorroad.com, the Go Ultra Low website for electric cars and grants. Raise awareness and share this film. Thanks and until next time, is it time to start giving a shit? I'll leave that with you.